Yellowstone supervolcano formation. A new study challenges traditional theory. This is on phys.org, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The recent stories of the national media magnifying fears of a catastrophic eruption of the Yellowstone volcano area. Scientists remain uncertain about the likelihood of such an event. And to better understand the region's subsurface geology, the University of Illinois geologists rewound the playback button, a portion of its geological history, to find out that Yellowstone volcanism is more, far more complex and dynamic than they previously believed. Quote, the heat needed to dry volcanism usually occurs in areas where tectonic plates meet and one slab of crust slides or subducts under another. However, Yellowstone and other volcanic areas of the inland western United States are far away from the active plate boundaries along the west coast. This is what geology professor Li Jun Yu, who led the research, said. He adds, in these inland cases, a deep-seated heat source known as a mantle plume is suspected of driving crustal melting and surface volcanism. In the new study reported in the journal Nature Geophysics, Geosciences, Liu and graduate students Quan Zhu and Jia Sun Hu use a technique called seismic tomography to peer deep into the subsurface of the western U.S. Okay, so they, they're, it's not just Yellowstone, it's also the western U.S. that they examined, and they piece together the geological history behind the volcanism. Using supercomputers, the team ran different tectonic scenarios to observe a range of possible geologi geologic histories for the western U.S. over the past 20 million years. Their effort yielded little support for the traditional mantle plume hypothesis. He says, our goal is to develop a model that matches up with what we see both below ground and on the surface today. We call it a hybrid geodynamic model because most of the earlier models either start with an initial condition and move forward or start with the current conditions and move backwards. Our model does both, which gives us more control over the relevant mantle processes. One of the many variables the team entered into their model was heat. Hot subsurface material like that in the mantle plume should rise vertically towards the surface. But that was not what the researchers saw in their models. It didn't just go straight up. He says, it appears that the mantle plume under the western U.S. is sinking deeper into the earth through time, which seems contraintuitive. And Liu explains, this suggests that something closer to the surface, an oceanic slab originating from the west tectonic boundary, is interfering with the rise of the plume. The mantle plume hypothesis has been controversial for many years, and the new findings add to the evidence for a revised tectonic scenario. The researchers said, quote, a robust result from these models is that the heat source behind the extensive inland volcanism, of course here they're talking about Yellowstone, actually originated from the shallow oceanic mantle to the west of the Pacific Northwest coast. This directly challenges the traditional view that most of the heat came from the plume below Yellowstone. Eventually we hope to consider the chemical data from the volcanic rocks in our model, that will help us further constrain the source of the magma because rocks from deep plume, mantle plumes, and near surface tectonic plates could have different chemistries. As for the likelihood of a violent demise of Yellowstone occurring anytime soon, the researchers say it is still too early to know. They say, of course, our model cannot predict specific future super eruptions. However, looking back through 20 million years of history, we do not see anything that makes the present-day Yellowstone region particularly special, at least not enough to make us suspect that it may do something different from the past when many catastrophic eruptions have occurred. More importantly, this work will give us a better understanding of some of the mysterious processes deep within the Earth, which will help us better understand the consequences of plate tectonics, including the mechanism of earthquakes and volcanoes. In the meantime, 
Another geologist has found that the mantle plume goes all the way down to the border of Mexico and also towards the west coast, taking in the Washington State, Oregon State, Northern California volcanoes, most of which are considered high threat by USGS classifications, most of which have erupted the past 4,000 years, 2,000 years, and 1,000 years, most of those high threat volcanoes. Also, we have recently had an article a few days ago by a geologist claiming that Yellowstone supervolcano mantle rock spreads sideways, as these geologists here have stated. It doesn't go vertical, but it spreads sideways. He states they spread sideways. It's the, the mantle rock spreads sideways for more than 500, kilometer, uh, 500 miles, 804 kilometers, from Wyoming in northwest U.S., moving deep below the Earth's crust, and that this mantle rock is a source of scorching low-density rock fueling the supervolcano's past major eruptions. Now, for a long time, geologists suspected Yellowstone sits on top of a mantle plume, long columns of the hot rock channeling heat from deep inside of the planet. Now, the doctor, Dr. Camp, Victor Camp, geologist, San Diego State University, found how this mantle rock moved towards the Pacific over long periods of time, he says, since the plume is not controlled by plate tectonics, it can rise and emerge anywhere on Earth, depending on where it manages to break through the Earth's surface. So knowing this will help us understand supervolcanoes, super eruptions that have occurred before and those that will occur in the future. Of course, here he's significantly, specifically talking about Yellowstone on the West Coast. According to the geologists, the mantle rock moving along narrow flow line channels deep below the Earth's crust. And then branching out at two points, once at Yellowstone and the second time at the California-Oregon border. One set of flow lines have since ended at the Medicine Lake Volcano in California, northeast of Mount Shasta, and another ended about 20 miles to the south of Bend, Oregon, at the active Newbury Volcano. And during the journey, the moving mantle rock would have contributed to a number of volcanic eruptions over the past two million years occurring in the volcanic area at the state of Idaho, known as the Critters of the Moon. That's around the uh, Snake River Plain, going up towards uh, uh, northeast towards where the present-day Yellowstone supervolcano caldera is. The mantle is a layer of rock between the Earth's crust and its hot core. USGS says the intense heat generated by the hotspot causes melting of the crust, forming basaltic and rhyolitic magma. Here you have a chart of the uh, West Coast volcanoes, and you can see from Canada all the way down to Northern California, all of these have erupted the past 4,000 years, uh, most of them past 2,000 years, and the ones on the supreme, on, on the uh, corner right, have, uh, for example, Baker, Glacier Peak, Rainer, Mount St. Helens, Mount Hood, Shasta and Lassen all have erupted the past thousand years. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition 
and the community around our church. Thank you.